Welcome back to my channel. So let's go ahead on and get right into it. Wow. Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. I will say this. That was the best episode I have seen of the whole Love and Hip Hop franchise. That was the most um, unscripted to me. That's how I felt watching it. Raw, um, very emotional episode or topic or I don't even know <laughs> it was really really good and um kudos to Mona for actually um bringing you know exposing that topic the topic like I said last video that topic is something that a lot of people in the hip-hop community is not talking about so to shine a light on it a little bit um it it was just amazing. It was kind of like this is the roller coaster and it's at the peak. So and everything else was just like who cares? Everything else was just downhill. Like they really should have taken this to be like a special show and really just talked about Miles and Amber and the Milan situation and their families. I thought that it just would have been better because when you're watching a the show, they hit you with that first. So it's like, okay, you coming out showing us the her whole reaction to what he has to say and then after that i think it goes into like the girls going to go work out who cares like you're sitting there like wow this is this is crazy so let me just go ahead on and get into it so miles finally tells um amber with her ponytail <laughs> that he is um into men and he's in love and has been having strong feelings for the same sex and she literally just loses it but first when he she comes in she looks at him and she's like oh you look real good you look nice and he's like thanks i like your shoes and i'm like bruh like <laughs> Tell me I look nice. You about to literally break my heart. Don't talk about my boots. Like, get out of here. You need to do as much kissing ass as possible right now because you about to break my goddamn heart. Don't talk about my boots. Anyway, so he basically just tells her and she flips the hell out. I mean, they couldn't even really get into anything. Like, he couldn't really explain or he couldn't really go into anything else because she literally got up and was no she started to cry and then he was like I gotta go to the bathroom like because he was getting sick and I'm like yeah you just destroyed this girl but it was you know you, you can't really rehearse this and you can't really you know practice that you know because that is a raw reaction and he was just like sick to his stomach and he was like I just need to get away for a second I need to go to the bathroom and she basically like don't walk away like this girl is crying on your shoulder like she's literally leaning on your arm crying her eyes out He's like, I gotta, I gotta use the bathroom. So she gets up like, I knew it, everybody said it. Everybody said it, everybody said it, everybody said it, everybody said it. So she runs to the bathroom behind him and she's trying to hit him or whatever. The, the, of course, the security is all around. And then she winds up trying to flee and go call her mom. So she's like stuck in the door. She's falling down to the ground. Then she goes outside. I don't know if that was one of the producers. I'm assuming that was one of the producers because she didn't have anybody there at, for her support. Um, so I'm sure that was one of the producers grabbed her and was trying to hold her and tell her, come on, you know, it's okay. She runs outside, she falls to the ground, she's kicking and screaming. Um, and I, I was just like, <laughs> I was just like, oh my gosh, like this is so wow. Like I, I was just, I was just done. And then of course he comes behind her and he's trying to talk to her and she's steady like, get away from me and ah. You know, y'all, I, whew, I don't know. I've never seen, like I said, we don't see it on TV like that. So that reaction, I've never seen before. So I know everybody was just kind of just sitting there like, whoa, like she, she you could tell she was 100% invested in him and their family and their relationship. And she had in her mind, you could tell 100% that it, they were going to work it out and they were going to be a family eventually you could tell and it was just like wow she just got her heart completely broken and I was just I I just felt so bad for her I really did and I felt bad for him because he it's it's like he's trying to tell a secret that he's been holding on for years and he knows it's not a good thing but he knows he needs to do it but the whole reaction, you know, was just like, whoa. And he just really just fell apart from that. And I, I felt really bad for him as well. Um, but it happened. She went into the van or the, the car. 
And then the therapist wound up going in there and really just trying to calm her down and talk to her. And it was very, it was very interesting. Um, she, she did say, I do want to talk to somebody. I want to talk to, um, his friend Milan because they've been hanging out a lot. And I'm like, bing, 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 bing. That's the guy. That's the guy, you know. But you need to just talk to Miles because that's the situation between you and him. You shouldn't even, and you know, when, when you're going through stuff, you want to, pull out and call out all these other people to get more answers because you're probably not sure you're going to get it from the actual person but you really should just try to really sit down and talk to the other person but as of right now she's heartbroken she's like she said violent right now and she don't want to talk to him she said she loved him you know that's not going to change but she's because you, know, you know you can't change who you are and i thought that was really good of her in that situation and in that moment that she still realized that and um but she said she just can't talk to him right now so she basically um, had to go. So the therapist was like, okay, well, listen, whenever you're ready, he is willing to answer any and all questions, full details, whatever you need. He is willing to do that. So just let him know when you're ready. She's like, okay, I just need to be my mom. And I think the therapist did a really good job of not showing emotion. I mean, that's what they do. Not showing emotion because me, if she would have said, I want to talk to this Milan, I'd be like, yeah, girl, that's, that's him. That's it. That's it. She just is like, you know, I think you should spend time with your family and the people who support you, your biggest support system, you just need to take that time tonight and just do that. And I think she really did a good job of saying that. And then she also was like, you sure you don't want to talk to Miles? I really think you should just talk to Miles, <laughs> not long but um she did a really good job it comes back to her of course she's in her bedroom she's sad she talks to her grandmother and her grandma was like i knew it child honey he was trying to do this and i knew it but you know what you was in love with him and she basically was expressing to her grandmother that you know i'm i feel dumb i feel stupid i'm embarrassed i feel like i wasted my life and she told her you didn't you know you're a woman you're human things happen i knew it but i didn't want to hurt your feelings and really you know break up with y'all was with whatever that was that y'all was having um as far as a relationship is concerned so i just i knew it but you know i let you live your life so she was just like i feel so sorry for you honey you know i'm really sorry for you and you know it's gonna be okay you still got your life ahead of you and it's fine you're gonna move on you got this information you're gonna move on so that was that with her on his side he wanted to go and tell his family because in the heat of all that stuff that was going on her emotions were like really riding high she said that she told everybody she told his mama she told everybody his family remember she's going in so he wanted to make sure he told his family first before she ever got to and he went to go talk to his sisters that was another one it was just like ugh, like okay so his sister, when he when he told his sisters, they first responded in a way of the, I don't know the other one's name. I can't remember, I couldn't see her name. It started with a C, um, but they first kind of responded like, "So you just gonna say F God? Like, you know, you supposed to be this, and you our only brother, and we want you to get married and have a wife and kids." And then I guess they saw his emotion behind. They saw that he was saying, um, they saw that he was really raw and really vulnerable and. They also heard him say that he, you know, it's been a lot putting on, it was been a lot trying to put on this facade that he was something that he wasn't and that he was going to kill himself and all this type of stuff. And you can tell immediately after that, it was like, listen, it's all good. Everything going to be all right. You're our brother. You're our baby brother. You're going to always be our baby brother. We love you. We're going to get through this. Um, but at the beginning, it was kind of like, oh, they going to like turn, uh, you know, turn on him during this time. But then you saw them kind of pull back and say, okay. We're going to figure this out. And I'm just like, I felt, y'all, like I was watching it like, oh my gosh. So then some kind of way, let's talk about Brandy. Lord Jesus. She meets up. I, let's just get to it. She meets up with Tiny. Y'all know T.I.'s wife, Tiny. I was just like, what is she doing here? So she meets up with her. And she's like, yeah, baby, you know, you got to do what you got to do. You kind of crazy. And da, 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 da. So she's basically giving her knocking some sense into it. Say, hey, yeah, he did this and he's wrong. But you are an end to blame as well. You are a part of the solution as well. Don't be a part of the problem. Be a part of the the solution. Fix it. Make it right. Be the first person to step up and do what's right. So she was like, you know, you're right. Let me go ahead on and figure this out. So child, they get home. Well, she gets home. She sets up this whole little romantic scene and she has the fruit and she has the chocolate covered strawberries and she has the wine or the champagne, whatever it was. And he comes in and he's just like, okay. So she's basically trying to turn over a new leaf and say, you know, 
you're my husband, you work hard, and maybe me nagging you all the time is not a good thing. Maybe I don't show you how much I appreciate you and how hard working that you are, how much I appreciate that. So I just wanted to do something real sexy and here, you know, do this and do this. And he's like, first of all, the angle that they had him in was showing all his situation. Please somebody shoot him from up here or something. I need them to do that. But she's just like kissing them all in his mouth. And she feed him strawberries and he just like, calm, calm down, calm down, I need to talk to you about something too. So he was just like, I'm, I'm glad you said that. He goes over to the dresser and he pulls out two rings and he's like, this is my ring, this is your ring, go start all over. This is something I'm not gonna throw away. You know, we just really need to just come together and do our thing and, and just start fresh. And so she's like jumping on him and she can't even see her ring cause she's just like jumping all on him and kissing all on him. I just can't. Me personally, I was done with the situation. <laughs> Once they had me at that angle, I was like, okay, um, I'm good with him and her. Like she said, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna nag you and do all this stuff ever to you again. So let's just see, cause you know, she crazy. So let's just see what happens with that. Let's talk about, well, let's quickly just, before I get to him, Soldier Boy, let's talk about Tierra Marie and Ray J. Now, first of all, they are sickly in love with one another. I don't care what he's saying, what she's saying, they love one another. And I don't know if they're ever going to leave each other alone. I hope they do because they're just toxic for each other. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I really believe that he is, if she wasn't so crazy, he would be with her. And if he wasn't so much of a dog, she would be with him. But because they just have been through so much and so much of the lies and disrespect, they can't be together. But they they definitely still love each other. So they went to their little secret place and she basically was like so calling him out. Like, why you do me under the bus? You know, F the relationship, X, F all the stuff that we've been through as a friend, friend on friend. Why would you take some, uh, some information that I wanted you to marinate on? verbatim and go ahead and throw me under the bus and he basically was just like listen let's keep it funky you don't like her you never liked her you were just with her because you want to get back with me and I like the fact that he called her out she was like I don't know what you're talking about but it is what it is it we all know it she just wanted to literally sabotage their relationship and see him either miserable or because she wanted him to crawl back to her crying like he's done before saying you know I just want to be with you so they basically was calling each other out and he basically ended the whole thing with lose my number, forget my name, don't ever talk, speak my name um, ever in your life ever again. They drive off, but you know they're going to see each other again. I mean, like I said, they love each other. They love each other. It's, they can't stay away from each other. Let's go into Soulja Boy, Tell Him, and um, Nia. Disrespect is a lot, like... For me, like when somebody disrespects somebody, not a man disrespecting a woman, but just in general, when you go ahead and come to somebody and apologize, but in the same breath, try to flip it. And then on top of that disrespect, like what the hell are you doing? He literally was like, okay, I'm gonna take you to this restaurant. You know, maybe I wasn't 100% honest about when we went into the situation with Nas, but I apologize. And so she's like, listen, I hear you. I see you bring me to this fancy restaurant. That's cool. But I'm tired of you apologizing. What am I going to do with an apology? I need for you to change. We have been going through this for a, a minute, like almost a decade of you going back and forth, doing this and doing that. And you're always sorry. And I need to see something else, you know. And so then he goes, what are you looking at me? I think it did it. And he, and he well, what you thinking? You had a baby. And, da -da -da -da. and I'm just like, flip, trying to flip it. Like, why are you trying to flip it? This situation is not about her having a baby when y'all wasn't together. This situation is not about her going out with her girlfriends and she he feeling like her girlfriends are thoughts or hoes or whatever the case may be like that. Because if that was a serious situation to you, you would have talked to her about that way before this situation had ever happened. But because you feeling blocked into a corner, now all of a sudden you're trying to flip that shit. And that's not cool. Don't do that. Then she's still not trying to hear what you got to say. So now you're being disrespectful. Listen, I worth $25 million. I could have just said this, did this, this, and then F it. Like, who cares? So if you don't care, if you don't want to hear me say I'm sorry, then get the fuck on. So she's like, you know what? I am going to get out your face. Goodbye. And he's like, F you. Da -da -da -da. And I'm like, how old is this gentleman? Like, I don't even know how old Soldier Boy is, but I know one thing. 
he's disrespectful as fuck and I don't like that. I hate that. Don't do that. Don't come to me talking about you love me and then all of a sudden flip it on me and then all of a sudden disrespect me. Like, who does that? Like, it's just sick. It's just sick. So I was not feeling him. Speaking of Nas, what the hell was that? What the hell happened to her at her event? That was her event. She invited Nikki Baby. Nikki Baby comes to the event. Nikki Baby basically is coming to tell her, listen, I know I told you I wanted you to, you know, gather up some girls for my fashion show, but you know what? I'm going a different direction. I don't want to F with you. I feel like you, you know, skanky. And I feel like you don't, you don't value yourself. <laughs> so... Like, whoa, you want to come to my event? And she was like, you just had that same situation happen with old boy and you and old girl. So, like, who are you? And she's like, first of all, I was the girlfriend. I wasn't the hoe. You're the hoe. So, no, I don't want to be a bother with you. So, she's like, you know what? Security, just <laughs> remove her from my event. I, you're not welcome here. Goodbye. And all of a sudden, she's like, girl, don't touch me. Don't touch me. And she's like, go. Goodbye. You're, you're out of here. And she's like, girl, listen, you, it's about to be a problem because you're touching me. So she goes to put her purse down. She turns back around. And a girl's like this. And all of a sudden, she just, like, throws up. Like, who does that? I was like, did she just throw up? And she did. And so Nikki Baby was like, ew, like, what you doing? Even the security guard who was trying to hold um, Nas back, he was kind of like, like, where's the throw up? I don't want to be around the throw up. Um, and then she's like, look at you. You sick. Like, that's disgusting. Like, how you going to sit up and have an event and you throw it up? Like, what the hell? Like, girl, you was, you was a mess. You're talking about me. She's like, oh, well, I threw it because your face is so ugly and all that plastic surgery. So I'm like, okay, maybe she's trying to play it off. Okay, that was a good one. That's a good comeback. Then her ass turns around and she's doing something else and she throws up again. Not once, twice. I'm just like, that is disgusting. So Nikki Baby was like, listen, I might have all this plastic surgery, honey, but I look good. And you over there throwing up, that is just disgusting, that's nasty. You just look a hot mess. And she did. My thing is, you're having an event. This is your baby. Whatever this place is that you have, this is your event. You want to always stay very fresh very nice looking so you can thank your people for coming you know you know network and talk to people and shake hands you can't be doing that if you fucked up like why are you throwing up that is so disgusting and unprofessional it's gross and even all her people her guests were just like ew like what is she doing she threw up twice i i was done i i was like Ugh. like i was <laughs> done <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. Let me know what your favorite part of the show was. That was a good-ass show. I am telling you, that gave me so much light. Just tell me your thoughts on the whole Miles and Amber situation. Like, that was some crazy stuff. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And please don't forget to thumbs up, share, comment, and subscribe if you have it. Thank you so much for watching. Till the next drama of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. Peace. Later.